Welcome to 61C's lecture on number representation. Woo! Great to have you here. Let's jump right in. One of the things you're going to see about data that lives all around us is that typically the data begins in the analog domain, and we need to then convert it to the digital domain. So the real world is analog. Everything you hear and see and smell is all analog. It's all fine, real numbers. But you need to then convert those to digital numbers to be able to work with them and do things with them. So in order to convert analog data to digital data, we must do two things. Number one, we have to sample. So that means we have to ask it at every time step, what's your value? And that usually is a regular interval. And for example, for music, for CDs, that's 44,100 times a second. We're asking it what its height is. But then the problem is the height might come out of some fractional number. And we need to then quantize that, which means divide it up kind of in, in, in its amplitude. And you ask it, what is its amplitude on some yardstick? And so we, we'll, we'll see how to do this, this lecture, this series of lectures. We divide it up into a 16-bit number. So that's two to the 16 possible tick marks on a yardstick, or 65,536 different tick marks. And we say, where are you? And some of these might not exactly align, so we kind of snap to the closest tick mark to figure what that is. When we're all done, we have a set of samples, and then we can work with that. So that's how we bring analog data into the computer. However, not all, not all data, digital data, is necessarily born analog. Sometimes you can just go into a system and create art, create music, create videos, create sound, completely without any analog re reference. So here are two pictures uh, by Pavre. Pavre is an animation software, a rendering software, really amazing, free open source, go check it out. And here are two beautiful pictures that existed only in the author's head, in the artist's head, until they here are at beautiful digital images. So they don't necessarily come from the outside world, they can sometimes come from the pure digital world. The big idea in this first lecture, this first uh, snippet of this module, is that bits can represent anything. They can represent characters. Well, I've got 26 characters, A through Z, so I'm going to use five bits. Two to the five is 32, and so I'll have one of these bit patterns for each of those characters. Well, actually, probably I want to have uppercase and lowercase and some punctuation, so let's do seven bits. And in fact, we'll reserve eight bits for it, but actually we'll only, only use seven bits for all the characters we'll need, and that's called ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Then you're going to say, well, Dan, that's a little uh, American-centric, and I'll say, you're right, that, that's what the A was for in ASCII. So it turns out that a group of folks says, well, how about my language, and my language, and my language? And so a consortium came around called Unicode with the idea that you would have the ability to store all the world's symbols used in all the world's languages. It turns out there's a lot of those symbols. So they then had different versions. They have an 8-bit, a 16-bit, and a 32-bit version of Unicode. Um, and so you can now, by the way, emojis are also part of Unicode. It's pretty cool. So you can have many, many symbols, all the Chinese characters, all the, you know, all the other languages' characters, uh, beautiful, beautiful language, beautiful patterns of how those characters are represented, all represented in, in Unicode. Probably you're going to need more than 8 bits for that, though. You also represent logical values. Zero is false, one is true is a common way we do that. How about colors? Here's R, G, and B, red, green, and blue. Uh, zero, zero is red, zero, one is green, and one, one is blue. Let's just to make it there. You, can, you don't have to have it in order, by the way. You can do that that way. Locations, addresses, commands, emotions. Happy is zero, zero. Kind of grumpy is zero, one. You can end up having a bit pattern for everything. Anything you can itemize, you can digitize. It's pretty exciting. So here's the big idea of this lecture. Memorize this. Memor I'm, I'm going to have a couple of times during this lecture, I'm going to say, memorize this. This is one of those times. N bits is two to the N things. Or said another way, if I've got two to the N, I've got some number of things, how many bits do I need? I take the log base two of that and take the ceiling of that, and that's the number of bits I need. Okay, so 28, 26 characters, 26 letters as an example, 26 letters, okay. Log base two of that is four point something, the ceiling of that is five, therefore I need five, because two to the five is 32, so it's the biggest power of two, bigger than the number of things I want to store, all right? See you at the next video.